So the Canon T8i is apparently Canon's best starter all-rounder do everything camera. It's a starter camera, but with a premium touch. So I really wanted to push this camera to its limits and really find out what this camera can do. So can this camera vlog? Can it shoot gorgeous YouTube videos? Can it take good photos? And overall, is it worth it? Let's find out. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is River. I'm a cinematographer and director. So when I review a camera, I use it for more than a week and I give you a review that's actually worth your time. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a like. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything to do with camera gear from entry level to high end professional gear. And we're always making tutorials to help you get better photos and videos. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure to subscribe. For photos, this camera does a full seven frames per second in full raw with pin sharp autofocus. The raw codec in Canon cameras is really impressive. You can really push and pull your image, really play around with the colors, and honestly, you can get something that's on par with a professional $5,000 Canon camera. I ended up taking a few quick photos of a good friend of mine, and I was really impressed by what this camera can do. The photos look sharp, and the colors look great right out of the camera, and after drizzling a little bit of editing magic onto those photos, I was really, really impressed. I honestly would not hesitate to use this camera on a paid project or any kind of photo shoot. If you're a video shooter, this is a really interesting camera, especially given the price point, but it does have two major issues. Honestly, not even two issues, more like an issue and a half. Mm, kind of confusing, but let me explain. It does gorgeous full HD in both 23 frames per second, which is real time, and 60 frames per second for slow motion. Unfortunately, it does not have 120 frames per second for super slow-mo, but at this price point, that is pretty hard to come by. And this camera does have 4K video, but it's actually something that hurts the camera package rather than make it better. And you might be like, hold on, River, we love 4K. 4K is something that everybody wants. It's like the buzzword, but here's the thing. It does 4K, but it does not do 4K well. This camera does 4K at 23.97 frames per second, which is real time. The issue is, when it does 4K, it actually crops in your sensor. Basically, it ends up zooming in your lens and suddenly you go from a wide shot to a close-up shot and it's a pretty heavy crop of 1.7, which means for shooting on an 18 millimeter lens, it is now suddenly a 28 millimeter lens. And on top of that, that gorgeous autofocus, which I will talk about later in this video, is no longer present in 4K mode. Ah, honestly, I wanna love the 4K in this camera, but it's just simply not there which is a shame, especially considering there's other Canon cameras that cost slightly more and do 4K so, so, so much better than this camera. Brands like Sony do 4K so much better. They might lack things like color science and autofocus like the Canon cameras, but they do 4K so, so, so much better than the Canon T8i. By the way, if you're interested in turning the camera that you already own or the camera that you're about to buy into an asset that's going to make you money every single month, check out the link down below for the Side Hustle course. The Side Hustle course was specifically made for people like you by me and my team to help turn the average person that just has a passion and interest in photography and video to somebody that has a high paying side business just using their camera. And you can start the side business without investing thousands of dollars in photography equipment or months of your time. So if you're interested in making money with just your camera every single month as a side business, check out the link down below. The colors in video mode are just as good as photo. They're bright and punchy and very well saturated. And thankfully you can go in and set up a custom profile, which I do talk about in my Canon T8i tutorial. Make sure to check that out on the main channel but you can set up a custom flat profile, which lets you tweak your colors a little bit more when it comes to post-production. But one thing that I should mention, this camera is not going to give you the same level of color flexibility in video that it gives you in photos. With video, you're gonna be able to tweak your colors a little bit, but it's not gonna give you nearly the same flexibility as it gives you in photos, and certainly not that of a $5,000 or $4,000 cinema camera. This is, after all, a budget starter camera with a few premium touches. This camera unfortunately does not have any in-body stabilization, but, 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 before we freak out, that is simply not a thing when it comes to Canon DSLRs. All the stabilization is actually in the Canon lenses, so as long as you're using a Canon lens with this camera, you will get really nice stabilization, and it does have software stabilization. It does crop into your image just a tiny bit when it comes to software stabilization, 
but it does a really good job. So if you do want to do handheld work or do some handheld walking shots with it, you will get a pretty smooth image. Overall, this is going to check off most of the boxes for video shooters. It's going to give you 90% of what you need, minus the extra premium features like C-Log, Cinema Profiles, but apart from that, it's gonna get the job done for you. I know I briefly touched upon autofocus when it came to this camera and I said it was pin sharp in photos, but really let me gush over the autofocus in this camera because it is phenomenal. This camera has Canon's dual pixel autofocus where if you know anything about Canon cameras, it is honestly just set it and forget it. Sony and Canon are really leading the industry right now when it comes to autofocus. This camera has a very organic focus pull and it really feels like more cinematic. It feels like a human zooming in. It doesn't take your viewer out of the moment. Best of all, this camera also has touch autofocus because thankfully it has a side articulating screen so you can literally touch the screen and focus to whatever you want. Even during live video recording, you can literally be focused on one thing, tap the object and it'll focus to the other thing. And that autofocus system makes it so ideal for vlogging. You can simply flip the screen around, tap on your face, and voila, you're in focus. If you're a vlogger, this is a great camera to use. Not only can you see yourself, but it is very, very, very easy to keep yourself in focus. Which brings me to my favorite part about this camera. It has something known as intelligent facial and object tracking, which means you can tap an object on the screen and will intelligently figure out what it's looking at and track it. Even as you move the camera side to side, it will track it and keep it in focus. And I know I've been saying so many good things about the autofocus in this camera, but remember when I said that this camera was imperfect and it had two major issues, or really an issue and a half? Here's the first one. The lens in this camera is absolutely garbage. The kit lens, the 18 to 55, is garbage when it comes to pulling autofocus. It is simply not good enough for this camera. I had so many incidences where I would tap something to pull focus to and it would literally just be too slow. I would walk way too quickly towards my subject and this lens just could not keep up. The 18 to 55 millimeter lens is literally a $50 lens. It is the cheapest and crappiest lens that Canon makes. The lens that I would actually recommend getting with this camera is the Canon 50 millimeter f1.8, which is about $99 USD, or the Canon 24 millimeter f2.8, which is 299 USD. I know it's a little bit more money, but those lenses are going to give you way better autofocus and they're going to look way better than the 18 to 55 millimeter garbage lens. And finally, let's talk about build quality and design of this camera because it's really going to matter if you're a video shooter and if you're an outdoor photographer. So this camera is a DSLR style body, which one of the many advantages of that style of body is that it's very robust and this thing is weather sealed. So you can really put it through its paces get it out in the elements, take it trekking, go hiking with it, just have a blast and this thing will not break down on you. But again, it's a camera, not a tank. One of the features that's really going to matter is the side articulating screen. Not only can you flip it out to the side, but you can also articulate it to get a low shot, high shot. This is really going to be important if you're a video shooter. But for most photographers, I find they tend to use the optical viewfinder. The buttons on this camera are nice and clicky. The ergonomics and placement of these buttons is great. You will have a very easy time using this camera. And on top of that, because of that side articulating screen, it's also a touch screen. You can easily navigate all of the major settings on this camera through that touch screen. You can change your shutter speed, aperture, ISO, all through that touch screen. One of the things that I love about Canon cameras is the fact that their menu system is super simple to use. And it's very streamlined and very straightforward. To be honest, my grandmother, who's like 92, could easily pick up this camera and make some Instagram bangers. If you're afraid of technology, which I know some of you guys are, this camera is very easy to use. And one thing that I have to mention is that the SD card on this camera actually goes in through the side. Most starter cameras actually make you take out the SD card through the bottom, which is really annoying, especially if you have it on a tripod. Your SD card needs to be switched out, then you gotta take it off the tripod and go through the bottom. But having it on the side is not only more secure, but it's also easier to take it in and out. And speaking of going through the bottom for the battery, this camera unfortunately does not use the Canon standard BP6 battery, which if you know anything about Canon cameras are monsters. Those batteries will literally last all day. Canon claims about 350 shots on a single battery charge in about two to three hours of video time, and that is definitely accurate. Most camera manufacturers tend to overhype their battery, but in this case, it's very accurate. And the other thing that video shooters will like about this camera is the fact that it has a microphone input on the side. Most starter cameras actually don't end up having microphone inputs and it usually holds the camera back. Having a microphone input on this camera makes it much more flexible 
as a content creation machine. You can do YouTube style videos like this where you're sitting down and talking to the camera. You can do vlogging, run and gun videos. Having the microphone input really takes it from a beginner camera to almost a proper production camera. Overall, the build quality and design of this camera is fantastic. And if you're a video shooter, you're really going to like the design of this camera. So what's the verdict? Should you spend your hard earned money on the Canon T8i? And the answer is going to surprise you. I do think that this camera is a very good value. Currently, right now, as I'm making this video, this camera is $799 with a kit lens and $749 without the kit lens. And it's only about $50 to $60 more than the previous model, the T7i. If you already have a Canon DSLR, like maybe the T6i, the T7, or the T7i, I don't think it's worth the upgrade. There's not enough in this camera to spend that extra money, especially if you already have a decent Canon camera. But if you're already thinking of getting a Canon camera, like a starter DSLR, it makes sense to pick up the T8i over the T7i or the Canon T7 because there's enough quality of life improvements like better image processing, better low light, better autofocus to spend that extra 80 to $100. But let's say you don't already have a Canon camera and you don't really need a DSLR. In that case, I would actually recommend getting the Canon M50 Mark I. That camera is almost $100 cheaper than this camera and is actually slightly better. The Canon M50 is actually a mirrorless camera and while this camera does seven frames per second, that camera does 10 frames per second. And while this camera does not have 120 frames per second, that camera has 120 frames per second, although it's in 720p mode. However, both cameras have really bad 4K, so if you're trying to get 4K, neither camera is really gonna do it for you. And they both have dual pixel autofocus, which is fantastic in both of them. The only advantage of this camera over the Canon M50 is the fact that the Canon M50 is a mirrorless camera, and so it does not have the standard Canon EF mount, which means if you wanna get standard Canon lenses on that camera, you have to buy a $70 to $120 Canon lens adapter, which makes it the same price as this camera. But once again, the Canon M50 is a mirrorless camera. It's not going to be quite as robust as a DSLR style body like the Canon T8i. So if you are thinking of getting your first Canon DSLR, you want that Canon image quality, plus you want it in a DSLR style body, the Canon T8i is a great place to start. And that's pretty much it for my review of the Canon T8i. If you guys have any more questions, hit me up in the links down below. I'm happy to answer every single one of your questions. If you guys want me to cover anything else, leave me a comment down below. And I'll be sure to cover your topic in my next video. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. It really helps the video out and subscribe for future content. I'll see you guys in the next video.